Thank you, Jesus. Praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give you glory.
Good morning, good morning. Welcome everybody. Tell the Lord thank you. Jesus name. God bless you, women of God. God bless you. God bless everybody that's joining us. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Welcome. We love you. We're glad that you're here. We're going to listen to the word of God on this morning. Welcome. Day 11. But guess what, y'all? We're in chapter 12. That's right, the book of Ezekiel. As we go through our 31 days in the book of Ezekiel with Lady Apostle prophetically speaking in God's presence and His power and prayer for a divine nation. God bless you in Jesus' name. This is Lady Apostle Robin Stokes. God bless you and welcome. I'm excited. Go ahead and grab your Bibles and your journals and your ink pens so we can continue to study together in the book of Ezekiel. I am in the King James Version and also the NIV, um, whatever version the Lord gives to you. Fine, but long if it's the Word of God. Hallelujah. Because you know there's other versions out there that's not of God. I want to make sure we're following along together. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Let me show you how much we love you. that have listened to us on iHeartRadio all over the country. God bless you. We welcome you. We thank you for joining us. Make sure you share this with iHeartRadio under Reveal to Redeem. So make sure you share this with somebody. Amen. So that they can be blessed as well. God bless you. Love you. And we know that love is patient and love is kind. Love does not envy, amen? The love does not envy at all. Proud or rude. Love is God. God is God. Thank the Lord. Tell the Lord thank you. God bless you. God bless you and welcome. We're glad that you're here. We love you. Thank you for joining us. We're in day 31 and 31 days in the book of Ezekiel. I am Lady Apostle Robin. We're here with SOAR TV Broadcasting Services. Um, we're live. I Heart Radio um, out to uh, 256 other countries. Go ahead and tap into our satellite. Reveal to redeem those that are outside of U.S. You can tap into as well. And those you can go on YouTube, Facebook, 
as well as Instagram. May God bless everybody. And we're going to get into the word of God. That's right. Prophetically speaking in God's presence and his power in a prayer for a divine nation. Just want to remind you, starting day 14, um, I believe that's on Monday, we're going to be covering two chapters at a time because there's 31 days um, in the month of July. And we know that there is more chapters here in the book of Ezekiel. So we want to make sure that we stay with one accord and make sure that we get all the information in that we're going to be sharing with you through the word of God. And we don't want to jump over nothing because we want to make sure that this word is coming to you, amen, straight from heaven. So I'm going to make sure that we're going to do two chapters to get through the book because God has so much more for us as well after we do these 31 days in the book of Ezekiel. But we thank you. And for those that uh, who's just now joining in with us, we studied in chapter um, um, 10 and 11 on yesterday um, as we've been going through the book of Ezekiel. God bless you. I thank God for your life. Thank you, too. Um, God loves you, too. God bless you, too. God, go ahead. and If you have any comments or if you have any questions as we're studying, you can go ahead and put them in a the comment box and know that God shall answer everyone that may have a question. Hallelujah. During the time of us studying. And I just want you to be encouraged on this morning as the word of God begins to touch your heart. In, a, in the name of Jesus, we come upon you, God, today, and we say thank you. We say thank you, God. We ask you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we ask you if you could just continue to stay in our presence, even as we go forth, oh God, and speak forth your word. God, we love you on this morning. We know that your word is true. We know that all things work together for your good, oh God, because we love you on this morning. But God, we cannot do this without you. So we thank, thank you for releasing the Holy Spirit unto us on this morning so that your word, oh God, can touch down and that we can receive a refreshing word on this morning. And God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the glory that is in this place on this morning, early in the morning. We thank you for your glory, God. We don't take it for granted, God, for your glory because we know that it is your glory and it's all because of you. And long as we continue to do your will and do what you call us to do, we know that everything else will be all right. So, Heavenly Father, we come to you and we just say thank you. Come on, y'all. Go ahead and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And again, we thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. I think uh, maybe uh, I can go uh, live for a couple minutes. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Amen. There we go. We, we're showing up. There we go. All right. But again, like I said, we're going to go ahead and start our study. And we got a reader that's going to read for us um, chapter 12 in the book of Ezekiel. So I want you to go ahead and grab your Bibles and, and I know you already prepared, but we're going to go ahead and study the word of God and we're going to go ahead and do this audibly on this morning, amen, so that we can stay focused. I don't want people to be focusing on me, but I want you to focus on the word of God. But I did want to just come in and I wanted to just um, greet everybody and say, may God bless you and may you have a prosperous, prosperous day, even as you're listening to the word of God. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the word of God as we go ahead and bring on our listener. I mean, excuse me, we're going to bring on our reader, amen, to read God's word for us, amen. For those that don't know, we're in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, amen. So go ahead, hallelujah. God bless you, thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to make sure everybody can hear us clearly, amen, as we go forth as well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we are in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12. Now we're going to go ahead with the reading of the word. Amen and glory to God. The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Turn now, when I dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not, have ears to hear and hear not, but they are a rebellious house. Therefore, thou son of man, Prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. 
then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in thy sight, thy stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth and eat them in thy sight, as they that go forth into captivity. Beat thou through the wall in thy sight, and carry thou their body. In thy sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, and thou sink off the ground. I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. And I did so as I was commanded, and I brought forth my stuff by day, a stuff for captivity. And even I came through the wall with my hand, I brought it forth in the twilight, and I bear it upon my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, and among the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What doest thou? Say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. This is burden concerning the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel that are among them, saying, I am your sign. Like as I have done, so shall it be done to them. They shall move and go into captivity. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight, and shall go forth, and they shall dig through the wall to carry out their body. He shall cover his face, that he see not the ground with his eyes. I also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him into Babylon, into the land of the Chaldeans. Yet shall he not see it, though he shall die there. And I will stand toward every wind, all that are about him, to help him, and all his bands. And I will draw out the sword after them. Jesus. And I shall know that I am the Lord. But I shall scatter them among the nations, and disperse them in the countries. I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen whither they come. And they shall know that I am the Lord. All the word of the Lord came with me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with waiting, and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of their inhabitants of Jerusalem, and of the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread with carefulness, and drink their water with astonishment. And on land they be desolate from all that is therein, because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? And therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. But there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. But I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, Will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for the reading of the word. Amen. I know you're looking and saying, well, I thought you said that if we get lost, just look and see what chapter we're on. Today is not the 12th. Today is the 11th. But what I'm doing is I had to go and do chapters 10 and 11 on yesterday and today because on Sunday we have our regular um uh, Sunday networking service at 8 p.m. So I want to make sure that I stay um, in line with what the Holy Spirit uh, want us to do. So that's why I went ahead and did chapter 12 on today. Amen. So that we will go right into chapter uh, 13 on Monday because tomorrow will be the 12th and then Monday would be the 13th. Amen. So that's the reason why you see that we're in chapter 12, but in day 11 for those that are just joining us so you won't get confused there. Amen. So make sure you join us tomorrow 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We don't know who we may have on to give us such a glorious word on tomorrow, but I want to um, 
invite you all to come on so we won't have the teaching um, on tomorrow we're doing that teaching of for today amen so we will go back to our regular teachings on monday amen and again we'll be doing two chapters um a day so we won't be uh in the same day of the chapters that the day that we're in due to us doing two chapters a day as well amen again i am lady apostle robin stokes and we're going to go ahead and get into the word and remember i told you we cannot obey god until we first listen to the word so we're going to get into the word of god we're in the book of ezekiel glory to god and what i want to do is i'm not going to go and go all the way back because i have those faithful scholars that's been following us ever since we've started so i don't want to take us all the way back but what i do want to do amen i want to make sure that i just briefly give us just a brief summary of what we studied on yesterday amen and yesterday we studied chapter 10 and chapter 11 and in chapter 10 and 11 we travel over from 8 and 9 which it continues hallelujah to be um where ezekiel is continued to be in a spiritual state amen remember at the same time there was a spiritual state amen glory to god so this spiritual state that ezekiel was in it was the spirit of god amen glory to god hallelujah okay give me about five minutes and we're going to come back live amen glory to god Three minutes, so we're going to come back live. So make sure you get, you keep your Bibles open. We're going to take a break, just three minutes, as I get prepared here, and we're going to continue in the Word. Amen. So just take a couple minutes there. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you. We thank you. We thank you. Let's go ahead and thank the Lord. I just felt led just to thank the lord before we go into his word because he's about to give us a mouthful he's about to fill us y'all he's about to fill us really really good on this morning so i just wanted to step away and just say thank you thank you lord for what he's about to give to us amen glory to god hallelujah but yes we thank you jesus we thank you lord now remember, Ezekiel was in a spiritual state because God began to take him up in the spirit. Remember, God took Ezekiel up in the spirit to in Jerusalem, and God began to reveal to him what Judah sin. That's what we begin to read in chapters eight and nine and ten, and even in eleven, and also the consequences. So the cities of Judah were to be burnt with fire because they rejected Jehovah and his mercy. And then Jehovah, he removed his glory from Jerusalem. Remember yesterday we said, hey, if God don't take away the glory, we need the glory of God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to be with us. We can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. We need God's spirit. So we said that, Lord, don't do it without us. Whatever we got to do. Whatever, how, whatever we got to change, whatever we got to do to make things right, we're going to do it. And then we begin to talk about the princes of Judah that were involved in the sin. And then we traveled over, hallelujah, that was in um, chapter 11. And then it talked about Jehovah promises to the remnant, those that will survive, those that were faithful unto the things of God. And then Ezekiel continued to have those visions, those same visions he began to have in chapter 1. Remember in chapter 1 when he began to talk about the, the, the chariot and the wheel and the, and the four, hallelujah, the, the ox and, 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 and the eagle and the lion and the man. Remember, begin to talk about their four, hallelujah, um, wings. They begin to talk about so many things um, in chapter 1, the same vision. And then it came back when God took him up in the spirit even as we travel through chapter 10 and 11. So even um, yesterday when it says that the Lord will scatter those people, he will scatter them, but he will also remember his remnant, those that he will save, those that will survive. But those that begin to what? Remember we talked about how the priests, how they begin to what? Worship what? The sun? How they begin to worship Tamnes, the, god the goddess? How they begin to worship what? The animals on the wall? 
Come on now. I remember how they even put their branch up to their nose like, oh, God doesn't see us. Are you serious? When God is an all-knowing, all-seeing God? But let's go ahead and travel in the book of Ezekiel chapter 12. As the reader have already read to us, we understand Ezekiel is commanded to depart from home during the dark night to illustrate God's judgment of exile to the people for their rebellious spirit. See, that's why the, the Jehovah God Almighty, he always came and spoke to um, Ezekiel and giving him a direction. Because even this passage of scripture start off, the word of Jehovah also came unto me saying, son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of the rebellious house. See, the Lord's perception of the people of God in Judah was that they were rebellious and hard hearted in relation to his laws. Amen. We, 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 when we read in the book of Ezekiel chapter three, God began to tell Ezekiel their ways, began to tell them their wicked hearts and their mind and what they, how they thought. So at this particular time, um, God also began to warn Ezekiel, let him know, don't get off course. Don't do what you try to do. You need to follow me and do what I'm calling you to do. See, while given this same parable um, in the book of Matthew 13, Jesus quoted from a, uh, a similar source. Even when you go over to the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9. Remember I said that I need for you to go ahead and write down these verses and these scriptures so that even when we get off of here, you'll be able to go back and study and do your homework and read back to um, the book of Ezekiel chapter 12 and then the scriptures that I'm giving you, parallel them together so that the Spirit of God can give you more of a revelation. So I need for you to put down Isaiah 6 and 9. Amen? But at the same time, we understand that Ezekiel understood that God was not playing. See, these people have went astray from God. They began to do their own thing. You know, when you become a rebellious person, that means that you are operating outside of God's will and you're operating in your own stubbornness, in your own um, pride, in your own arrogance and all the things that's not of God. And God does not like a rebellious person because you're out of his will. You're out, your heart becomes hard. Your heart becomes bitter. Your mind becomes closed and the Holy Spirit can, cannot begin to speak to you. So your vessel can never be empty because you're so full of your pride, so full of your stubbornness, so full of your bitterness so full of you yourself you all into you it's in vain and it's nothing of God there's no humility there's no humbleness there's no love there's no patience have you ever been around people that's like that see these type of people had all of that with inside of them so that's why as God began to give um um, Ezekiel, Prophet Ezekiel, more and more directions, even a symbolic act was to be, be performed by Ezekiel in a plain view of the people that depicted a disobedient people being taken from their house, amen, and being brought into captivity. See, Ezekiel packed up his belongings and prepared his move. See, he had to go. See, after God took him up in the spirit and began to show him, began to transport him in the spirit. Remember, I said he was not um, physically um, taken to Jerusalem. He was taken by the spirit, meaning that he it was in a, there was a vision. Hallelujah. God gave him a vision. God allowed him to see in the prophetic realm what was going on and what would happen and what the end will be. So Ezekiel had the right time to go and warn the people and let them know, look, you could be that remnant. You could be those that's going to survive. But if you don't get this right, destruction is already coming to you. Guess what? It can't be stopped. It's already set. It's already in place. So if you listen to me as a prophet and know that I am speaking, thus said the Lord God, you and your household can be saved. Amen. But at the same time, you have those those rebellious people like we got today. They don't listen. They still want to do things their way. They don't understand that it's not their way, but it's God's way. And the reason why things are not happening for them is because they continue to do things in their own way and until we get out of our own flesh and begin to get into the spirit of god and remember i said that this is a uh, ezekiel was in a spiritual state 
He wasn't in his own flesh. He wasn't in his own saying, I'm a prophet and I'm a pastor and I'm an apostle and I'm an evangelist and I'm a fivefold and I'm an archbishop, a chief of He went into all of that. He was just a merely servant of God to speak the words of God. He was an oracle of God speaking, thus said the Lord God. So therefore, that's why God gave him such a prophetic direction. But he let him see things spiritually before he allowed him to walk in the natural to fulfill the calling, the commission that he called him to do. See, the thing is, the love of God towards us and towards the people that we're reading about in this passage of scripture, let me tell you, it says, it may be they will consider, meaning that if they will consider their ways, if they will begin to what? Turn back. Like the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves. See, first you got to humble. See, you can't pray and see God's face without humbling yourself. Because see, in order for you to see God's face, you got to empty yourself. And when you empty yourself, you got to humble yourself. You can't empty yourself until you humble yourself. You got to humble yourself and kill yourself. Meaning kill your flesh. Not kill yourself literally, physically, but you have to kill your flesh. Amen? You cannot allow your flesh, hallelujah, to, to, to overtake you in everything. You can't allow your flesh to make decisions for you. You got to make sure that your spirit is overtaking your flesh. That's why all of this right now is a spiritual state. Amen. All of this is a spiritual state. This was a spiritual state for, for Ezekiel. This was nothing natural. This wasn't nothing. You know, all of this was he was in the spiritual state. Amen. God took him up in the spirit. Hallelujah. Just to see what God wanted him to do. Sometimes God has to set us aside just for us to do what God wants us to do so that we can get it. But at the end of the day, let me tell you this. God will allow us to consider our ways. So that's why we have to go back and make sure that our ways are not our ways. We, we got the ability to change our ways. That's why here in that scripture, uh, when he's, when he told Ezekiel, he says, it may be they will consider, meaning that they will may think about their ways, meaning thinking about changing their ways. Amen. See, God's desire is that his people will repent of their sinful nature and return to him, right? See, God is a God that wants us to come and repent inwardly. We can't keep doing it outwardly, y'all. Falling down at the altar. Uh, 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 and all of that. But really, your heart is still hard and stony. And you still, and you don't even have love. Not even for yourself. Not even for God. Not even for his people. You're doing it outwardly. You just want people to see, oh, I'm saved. Oh, I'm sanctified. But really, what is your heart saying? Really, what your fruit is bearing? That really lets you know who you really are. Is that really a true inward repent, um, repentance? It's not my job or no other man or woman of God's job to bring repentance. Only the word of God, God himself, can bring repentance. All we have to do is bring God's word so that God's word can do the work. God's word will deliver. God's word will set people free. See, God's will is not for us to be a sinful man. God's will for us to be Walking in his glory by us obeying and walking out of our flesh so that we can tap into the spirit of God. Amen. So that's why he began to even say, dig thou through the wall of their sight and carry out therefore. So Ezekiel was commanded to dig a hole through that wall. Come on now. When he was told to dig a hole in that wall, amen, that was either his house or a wall around his property. He wasn't just um, told to go dig in somebody else's wall. Now, let's make this clear. Okay, God ain't the God that's going to get us in trouble, even though he made the wall and he made the house. But God is a God of order. So this was a place where Ezekiel was comfortable, and it was a place that he had 
he had the ability um, to, to do this. Amen. So either it could have been his house or it could have been somewhere around. But we just don't go digging in people's walls and go digging in, in, in walls and buildings. But like I said, y'all, this was a spiritual direction. Amen. So he told him to dig a hole through the wall. Hallelujah. And when he began to dig a hole in the wall, he was to blindfold himself to illustrate uncertainty of his footsteps. Why? Because he, God wanted him to walk by the Spirit. See, sometimes when we see with our own eyes, we miss God. God don't want us to keep seeing with our own eyes. He wants us to see with the eyes of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can lead us. So that's why he had to be blindfolded so that he could continue and know how to walk by the Spirit and hear the voice of God. See, the voice of God will lead us and, and transport us where we need to be in the Spirit so that we can walk out the plan that God has for us through the assignment that God has given unto us and the vision that God have incorporated us to go in. So as Ezekiel was to be blindfolded, this was him to learn the spirit, the God spirit. See, he had to be, have an ear, a keen ear of discernment to hear the spirit of God. See, come on, y'all. I, I need you to understand. I'm talking in parables right now. Some of you getting it, some of you not. But literally what it, all this is saying is that, you know, being blindfolded is not blinding you. God has to train us to walk by his spirit. We cannot walk only by our own intellect, our own wisdom, our own knowledge. The spirit of God trains us by blindfolding us to get king discernment, meaning to be in his word through prayer, through um, meditation of his word, also devotion of his word, through worship, through, through praise. All those things allow us to begin to learn the voice of God. Those things allow us not only to learn the voice of God, but it allow us when we're in a place, sometimes feeling lost or in a place where we can't see. See, sometimes we walk in a place we can't see, but we have our natural vision. We have our natural eyes, but sometimes we're in a place in our life and we don't know the direction. We don't know if we need to go south, north, east, or west. We know that we're close. We know that we're going, but we don't know that direction. That's that's why we have to tune in our King discernment by saying, okay, let me empty myself. I'm coming back to this. I'm coming back to those jars that the widow woman had to send her sons to go collect. I'm talking about emptying ourselves like those empty jars to be empty vessels so that when she got that oil and began to fill those empty jars, come on now, she had more than enough. She had an abundance. God wants us to overflow in his glory. God wants us to overflow in his presence. God wants us to overflow in his power and demonstration through miracle signs and wonders. But we could not do that because we are not empty out. We're too full of ourselves. We're too full of our own intellect. We're too full of our own wisdom. We're too full of our own education. We got bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, doctor's degrees, PhD degrees, the upper degrees, you know, we got so many degrees. I can't even pronounce them all, but you know, we think we all of that in the bag of chips. But the thing is, we need to have king discernment. We need to have the spirit of God. We need to have the wisdom of God. Not just merely the faith of God, but the, sp the spirit of the wisdom of God. Because there's a gift of wisdom, but we want the spirit of wisdom. Because the spirit of wisdom is God mind himself. That's just one of his attributes. Hallelujah. So we need to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to give us that king discernment and learn how to walk. Hallelujah. Even when we're in a blind place, even when we're in a place that we cannot see, even though we have our natural eyes, so that we can hear God by the spirit and be led by the spirit. And even when we preach, we need to preach by the spirit. When we pray, we need to pray by the Spirit. We need to quit doing everything in our own way. We need to let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit and lead us. Hallelujah. And that's what Ezekiel was being trained to do. Being led by the Spirit. So that's why he was blindfolded. Hallelujah. See, while the people in exile saw Ezekiel do these things, it would certainly remind them of how they came to be in their current condition in the land of Chilidon. Ezekiel carries out God's command exactly as he illustrated. He carries out God's plan um, exactly how God instructs them to be played out. 
He does not add anything. He does not take anything away. See, Jehovah begins to explain the symbolic acts to Ezekiel. See, right here, Pastor, excuse me, Pastor of Scripture, Ezekiel 8 through 11, it says, And in the morning came the word of Jehovah to me, saying, Son of man, have not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What doest they? Say they unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, This burden concerneth the prince of Jerusalem and all the house of Israel, coming whom they are. Say, I am your sign, like I have done. So shall it be done unto them. They shall go into exile and captivity. Glory to God. See, God is speaking to Ezekiel. He reveals that he has knowledge of his people. And he's asking the prophet Ezekiel, what does that mean? He asked him a question. Come on, God begins to talk to us. See, you got to be in such a place where you can hear God literally talking to you. He sometimes will ask us questions. Listen, he asked the prophet Ezekiel. He said to him, who does that? See, this is exactly what Jehovah wanted out of the situation. He needed dialogue with the people that perchance they may listen and learn. Sometimes we need to just have dialogue, y'all. We don't have to always have a big revival. We don't have to always have a big concert. We don't always have, a, have to have a big prayer meeting, even though prayer is good. Don't stop praying. Pray without ceasing 24 sevens, because I know that's what keeps me going. But I'm saying sometimes we just need dialogue. First, we need the Holy Spirit to give us what it is that he's going to dialogue with, and then we take that and we dialogue among one another, and then we come up with a solution. We don't want to dialogue anymore because we have already arrived. We have all been in the church for over 50 years. We done built 7, 8, 9, 10, 50 churches. We got over 2,000 members. We've been in ministry for over 60 years. We as a bishop, archbishop, chief apostle, some other arch and arch and arch that we don't know how to come back to the table and reach across the aisles and dialogue no more. We're against one another. We talk about each other. We come against each other. Leaders, we sow discord. We gossip. We do all things against the will of God until we come to a place where we could come to a meeting of the mind and begin to dialogue just like God began to dialogue with Ezekiel because he wanted to make sure that if there was any concerns, if there was anything that Ezekiel was not um, for sure about, he wanted to make sure that Ezekiel knew exactly what he was doing because this assignment was more than just an assignment. This was a mandate. This was a divine revelation. Hallelujah. A, 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 a mandate given by God. This was not just no silly, just no, just simple assignment, but this was something that was coming against a city, glory to God, coming against a people, glory to God, and their life depended on it, glory to God, so Ezekiel had to make sure that he got it right, amen, see, the prince in Jerusalem at this time would be King um, Zechariah, excuse me, Zechariah, Zedekiah and the people of Judah were to be taken to captivity by the Babylons. See, Ezekiel's actions were for a sign of truth so that when the captivity occurred, they would know. They would know. Not they would hear, hear. But they would know. See, it's the difference between knowing and just hearing. Because sometimes when we hear, we don't hear. We don't listen. It goes one end after the other. See, what lets me know that you listen because now I know you know, and your actions is speaking louder than your words. Your actions is what I see. So, in other words, like I said, this was a sign that they would what? No. They would know. They would surely, surely know that the matter was from God. This was not from Ezekiel. This was not from the king. This was not from so-and-so. This was not from the prophet. This was not from the evangelist. It was not from the pastor, the apostle, the bishop, the arch, the chief, whatever, whatever, the son, the daughter, the husband, the wife. Come on. The government. Come on. This was from the Lord. The fact that Ezekiel actions were a sign indicates that this is Jehovah divine decree. This was a divine decree against his people for their rebellious, being rebellious. They were rebelling. They were rebelling. Don't we got some rebelling people right now? Oh, my God, we have to pray for them.
We have to pray for them, y'all. See, some may say, why would this be so important for the people who already are in captivity? Like, why Why do I got to worry about this? I'm already in captivity. I'm already in bondage. How this going to help me? See, that's the thing. We're thinking with that same mindset. A lot of us have come out of bondage. A lot of us have come out of a dry, dark place. But we're allowing our mentality our mentality to keep us in that place because we don't want to change. We don't know how to decree and declare a thing. We don't know how to speak things into existence. We don't know the power that God has given unto us because before this began and before this started, he said that he blessed them. He blessed them what? The man and the woman. He blessed them. Not just blessed the man, not just blessed the woman, but he blessed them as one, to walk as one, to be as one. Glory to God. He blessed them. And then he said to them, to what? Be fruitful. Glory to God. He didn't say you're going to get fruit. He didn't say go and find fruit. He didn't say you got to go work for fruit. He said be fruitful means that you already see. Be when you understand B-E, it means that you already is. You, you It's already, it's working. It's working for you. Be fruitful. Come on now. Be, come on. Be fruitful. Uh-huh. Multiply. Replenish. Come on. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Take dominion. Come on. These were de- divine decrees that God was given unto man and woman before they even begin to walk the earth. Those, those same decrees, divine decrees that we have right now today. Do you know your spiritual identity? Do you know who you are in God? Okay. I know you may be a prophet. I know you may be a bishop or archbishop or chief apostle, whatever you is, a chief evangelist. I don't know. Yeah. I got so many names. I can't keep up. It it doesn't matter about your gift. That's just a gift. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, do you walk in the power and demonstration of God? Could you decree a thing and it come to pass? Could you raise the, could you raise the dead? Could you heal the sick? Could you cast out demons? Glory to God. Could you take somebody's mind and speak the word of God and let the word of God bring deliverance and then their mind be not only transformed, but it first be reformed and then be transformed to be able to be Renew so that they can be able to be transported into the spirit of God to walk into their purpose and destiny. God has given us that power to begin to begin to speak life. We don't need to keep speaking um, uh, to dead situations um, and letting those situations still be dead. Those dead situations need to um, be uh, come to life. When we speak to dead situations, it's supposed to bring life. It's like watering a plant. When you water a plant, you feed a plant, you feed it, and you give it the nutrients that it needs. It it's going to grow. But if you don't feed it or give it the nutrients, the water and the other things that it needs, the sunlight, it's not going to grow. We need to speak life into people. We need to speak hope into people. We need to speak, oh, yes, you can. I remember when Obama, President Obama came. That was his word. Yes, you can. Meaning that no matter if they say no, no matter if they say you may can't get it tomorrow, your credit ain't good, you, you ain't never had it. Guess what? Yes, I can. Because God said that I can have all things through Christ who strengthened me. Hallelujah. So guess what, y'all? You got to start speaking your divine decree that God has given you. This was the same divine decree that was against God's people. Hallelujah. Because God was tired of them. Why? Because they were rebellious people. We don't want that divine decree to come against us negative. We want a divine decree to come to us positive. We want God to send out a divine degree of positivity, a divine degree of uh, prosperity, of uh, a, a, a divine degree of health and healing. Hallelujah. And more uh, patience and just all the great fruits of the spirit. We want positive decrees, but we don't want no decree saying that he gonna wipe us out but guess what y'all we keep on doing what we doing and acting the way we act especially us leaders glory to God God is not playing this same word that he had for them in the old testament it goes for us today yes we're not living in the law no we're not we're walking by grace and mercy but I'm gonna tell you something God is a God that still stand on his word and we gotta get it right he don't want our hearts to be hard he don't want our hearts to be stony he don't want our hearts to be rebellious he don't want our hearts to be in pride so therefore if we walk into these things guess what there's going to be indignation against us hallelujah God's wrath so we don't want that we want eternal life hallelujah we want to go to glory we want to be in a place hallelujah where there's just the glory it's just glorious there we know the story hallelujah so at the end of the day so at the end of the day like I said they may say hey we already captive we already in bondage amen 
But see, the thing is, the act and the sign performed by Ezekiel in the sight of the current would serve to let them know that there was no hope in returning to Jerusalem anytime soon. Because remember, all the things that was going on, who would want to go back to a place that they know was doomed? But at the end of the day, this remedy, there was a remnant of those that will survive. So if I'm a cap, so if I'm in cap, so if I'm in, in um, captivity, and if I know I'm among that remnant that's gonna survive, glory to God, I'm gonna still have hope. I'm gonna still speak positivity. I'm gonna still speak life. Hallelujah. Because guess what? I'm gonna survive. It's not gonna touch me in my household because God said it. So there was hope. But see, if the king and all the people who are presently in Jerusalem are going to overthrow, surely there's no hope. But guess what? At the end of the day, there's hope. Because I know for sure Jehovah promised that a remnant will survive. That's right. Those that followed us yesterday, we talked about that in chapter 11. Uh, I believe that was around verses 14 and 21. Amen. See, the explanation of um, Ezekiel Act is given in regards to King Zechariah. He would flee in the night with his belongings over his shoulder. He would dig through the city walls to escape. He would cover his face, possibly in shame for running. Though he tries to escape, the knot of Jehovah will spread over him and he will be captured. Come on, you can't escape God's wrath, amen? Because remember, God is an all-knowing, all-seeing God. See, once captured, the king will be taken in captivity, that's right, to Babylon. Having his eyes got out and die in prison. See, truly Jehovah speaks and end from the beginning. All that Ezekiel had was a divine prophecy in the hearing of the captives coming to pass. That's all he had. So not only would um, the king, Zechariah, be taken, but all of his army too. They would be what? Devoured by the sword. So on a multitude of occasions in Jeremiah, as we have already noted in Ezekiel, the Lord pronounced the penalty of death by what? Sword, pestilence, and what? Famine. For those that was not with us, I'll give you the um, in the book of Jeremiah, that was um, chapter verse 11 and 12. Also, that was um, Jeremiah, um, let me see, uh, chapter 21 and 7, and Jeremiah 24 and 10 I do believe yes and and, and, and then you got to go back and read Ezekiel uh, 5 and Ezekiel chapter 6 amen and then we will see once you put all this together it says here we see that none will die amen but a remnant here go this remnant a remnant would be allowed to escape that way and the Bible just says declare all the abominations among the nations whether they come and they shall know that I am Jehovah. See, when the nations, hallelujah, heard these things, they would know. And they shall know that I am Jehovah, right? See, they would know that it's God. Because when they hear, see, when you have a hearing, when you have a word in your ear and you hear it, you know that that's God. So here again, as Ezekiel know, it just says, and you should know that I am Jehovah. So that reminds him. That God say, I am who I say I am. Amen. So there was apparently, apparently something going on. See, the Lord will no longer, hallelujah, the Lord will no longer withhold because he said that they are a rebellious house. They are rebellious people. But let's drop down to uh Verses 21 and 25 as we close out. And the word of Jehovah came unto me saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in, it, have in the land of Israel saying, The days are prolonged and every vision fell up. Tell them therefore, thus said the Lord Jehovah, I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. Come on now. So there was an apparently a proverb or a saying among the people in Judah that alluded to the fact that Jeremiah and Ezekiel's prophecy regarding the end of Judah were far away. See, some prophets were even telling the people that the prophecies, come on, we talked about those false prophets yesterday in the book of Jeremiah. That was what? Chapter 31. You better go back and read the whole chapter. See, these false prophets were even telling the people that the prophecies regarding the destruction of Jerusalem and the people were all together not going to happen. 
You know, that was in the book, Jeremiah 37, 19. Specifically that right there. The Lord will no longer stay his judgment. The days of long suffering are over. Hey, you better be careful. See, where did these prophets get this idea? That Jeremiah and Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel prophecies were intended to be carried out far off. See, here is a case, hallelujah, of their own intellect, their own prophecy, their own lies. They prophesy, lie. they prophesy, lie. they prophesy. Lie. Lie. See, they simply dream this idea in their own head. This was something they thought in their own mind, but it was not true. It sounded good, but it wasn't good. It wasn't even real. They begin to, remember I told you to be careful when you say one lie, it become another lie. They call those white lies. You begin to believe your own lie. And you know you're lying. And you begin to believe it and you know you're lying. These prophets were proper lying. Yeah, they were. They were proper lying. Jeremiah's prophecy was a source of laughter to the rebellious house of Judah. Uh-huh. See, the days of fulfillment have come. The Lord will delay his wrath no longer. It's coming, y'all. It's here. You better get your house in order. You better act. You better. It's the end of the. Y'all, if you don't know that this is the end, if you don't know that we, the time is coming, if you don't know that you better get your house in order, come on now. Everything in the word of God in the book of Matthew is playing out. Rumors of war, men lovers of their own money and women. Lovers of their own money, sons against fathers, daughters against mothers. Come on, nations against nations. Come on, fire, storms, Corona, 19, Jesus. The last days will be filled with men who in the spirit of mockery say, where is the promises of his coming? I've heard that so many times. Where? where, where when? Is that God? Is that you sure? But they're supposed to be men and women of God. Come on now, be careful. Those are men and women of mockery. Until next time, y'all, we thank you for joining us. We're finishing up chapter 12, prophetically speaking to God's presence and his power in prayer for a divine nation. That's right. I'm Lady Apostle Robin Stokes. I thank you for joining us. And we thank God for your life. I thank God for you on this morning. I thank God for you joining us. We'll be back on tomorrow. And we're going to just do our... Uh, our uh, uh, SOAR International Network, just the word um, on tomorrow. That's right. Uh, and then that's why I said we did day 12 today to take to take that out so that we, we can make sure that we get everything done. So may God bless everybody. May God keep you. And again, we'll be back here on Monday, 8 a.m. Don't know it'll be 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Depends on what a.m. the Holy Spirit brings us back on. Amen. But we will be back on in the a.m. Um, 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 on Monday. God bless you. We'll be doing two chapters uh, from here on out to make sure that we get done um, by the end of July. Amen. Glory to God. Again, we thank you for joining us. Um, this is day uh, 11 in the book of Ezekiel 31 day journey. God bless you. I am Lady Apostle. And we thank you for the word on today. In Jesus name. God bless you. Don't forget to join us.